I'm Davis Hamm with Loud Light. This is your three minute recap of the third week of the Kansas legislative session. Vice President Mike Pence broke a 49-49 tie on the U.S. Senate floor to confirm Governor Brownback as Ambassador of Religious Freedom. Brownback's resignation will take place next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Then Dr. Jeff Coyer will be sworn in as the 47th Governor of Kansas. Brownback's last significant act may be him pushing through a $362 million contract for a private corporation to build a new Lansing prison. The deal is under a non-disclosure agreement, so it's unclear when we'll learn how much profit CoreCivic will make off the project that would otherwise be funded by government bonds. Secretary Kobach runs a system called CrossCheck where several states share data in an attempt to prevent double voting. This week we learned Florida accidentally sent 1,000 Kansan social security numbers it received through CrossCheck across unsecured email. Kobach called it unfortunate and Florida is paying over $100,000 to provide identity theft protection for those 1,000 Kansans. Just days later, it came to light that tens of thousands more Kansans' private information, including social security numbers, were publicly available for anyone to see on websites managed by Secretary Kobach. Kobach claims he had to make social security numbers public. However, Kansas law explicitly states the secretary should redact such personal information. Previously, Kobach cited this redaction law when he denied his own data request as vice chair of a presidential commission. Many questions remain such as if Kansas is responsible for billions of dollars in identity theft liability from CrossCheck and the poorly managed record system. In a press meeting Tuesday, Democrats pushed over a dozen bills aimed at improving transparency, ranging from mandatory documentation of every vote to establishing a waiting time before former legislators can lobby. Republicans are also pushing for transparency reform and many transparency initiatives have bipartisan support. Wednesday, the Free State Election Act was introduced in the House and Senate. It removed the requirement of providing a birth certificate to register to vote, expand early voting opportunities, withdraw Kansas from crosscheck, and enact Election Day voter registration. The bill is supported by the Kansas Coalition for Citizen Participation. Deputy Education Commissioner Del Dennis, who has served for nearly half a century, came under fire from Senate President Wagel and House Speaker Reichman, who claimed Dennis gave several million dollars too much each year to assist with the cost of school bus transportation. Many saw this as an attempt by the leadership to shift blame for the state's unconstitutionally underfunded schools. An outpouring of support for Dennis came from nearly half the legislature and all living former elected governors of Kansas. Friday, the Board of Education voted 9-1 to in confidence that Dennis was performing his job correctly. Kansas has one of the highest sales taxes on food, and next Thursday, the Senate Taxation Committee will hear a constitutional amendment to lower it down to 2%. If passed out of the legislature, it'd be on the 2018 ballot. Head over to loudlight.org slash kslag to see just some of the tons of hearings going on this coming week. If you're able, please consider donating to Loudlight. I love making these videos, but it does take equipment, software, and way more time than you think. Monday, January 29th is Kansas Day, so celebrate 157 years of the free state and its revolutionary history. Stay tuned, stay engaged, and until next time, thank you so much, Kansas.